Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to say good morning. Yes. Ah, notepad, pencil, tea, and chocolate. Good, good. I have Kyla, John, lights, camera, microphone, laptop, fiber, coffee, chocolate, not too far away. <laughs> this was a this was a lot to put together sort of just because we have um so many components with the wet felting and the armature and the needle felting and there's some sewing and there's waxing and then eventually there's some flying um so i have no idea how long this is going to take but um i think i have it for you all um, pretty well worked out to move right along. So, we'll just, hello, Sue, hello, Polly. We'll just do some, let's let everybody get in here and before I get started. I'll show you my happy pants. Oh, wait, I don't, I will. I'll figure it out. There we go. See how happy they are? Can that, is that in there? So, Marsha gave me these. You know someone knows you well when they can buy you a pair of yeah. pants. <laughs> but you can't wear these pants and not be happy. So everybody needs them. Where did she find them? She found them. I have the card it's at the top of the stack. Karma Nepal Crafts. I spent a few months in Nepal, and so they were extra um, on point. Yeah, Karma Nepal Crafts. I'm pretty sure it's an Etsy shop, and that's where they are from. Okay, so let me, I'll just explain what we're gonna do and then we'll get started. And you guys can ask questions and, you know, interject um, as, as needed. We're going to make our armature. We can do that together. And we need four, um, four wires, 22 gauge. Black if you have it, uh, brown is great. White works too, it doesn't, you know, we can work with whatever. Um, and then we're gonna wrap the armature. The first thing I'm gonna show you is the wet felting layout, which I'm gonna switch to the overhead and actually lay out a set of wings. Uh, there were a few questions of if they're templates. Uh, I didn't make a template. Kind of, it's so freeform. It, even if you made a template, like, it's going to be very vague, <laughs> just a very vague shape because it all shifts and felts and shrinks. So um, it's really not that complicated. And some of the wing details, you can either felt or cut afterwards. Like pretty much everything I've made, even things that I was like, oh, these aren't perfect, I've been able to work with. So I have a set of wings uh, finished, but we are gonna see if Kyla can wet felt what I lay out today while we're um, while we're chatting and then I'm going to show you how to put the wings on but I'm not going to sit here and do it because it's just about a half an hour of sewing um, that's the best way I think I have done it needle felting and um, it's just not as neat as a nice little stitch um, to hold everything together then once we're at this point um, I will show you the face and putting on the fur. I'm going to show blending the fur, putting on the fur. I might not put on all of the fur because again, that's just a really time consuming step. And I have a few that are finished and um, have all of their fur on. So I can show you those up close. Um, and then I do have the wax here. It's completely 
up to you to experiment with it. I am at the very tippy top of the iceberg with experimenting with it. And I have one um, bat whose wings are wax and I'll take that down and show it more clearly. And I'll show you on one of the ones that are finished um, how, how I applied it. So that is the, um, that's the plan. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions so far? Not that nope. I see. Okay, just everybody getting oriented. Okay, John, we can go overhead and um, yeah, and I can start laying out the wings. How do we have like 10 lights on and I feel like it's a little bit, a little bit dim, but this looks pretty good actually. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna lay out the wings first before we make the armature and then we're gonna go back because I just, I wanna, this is a little bit big and delicate and I wanna get it out of the way. Um, you had an idea about laying the armature onto paper if someone really wants to make their own template yes, guide. Yes, yes. If you have, I had a piece of cardstock, here we go. You could take a piece of paper, put the armature down, you know, trace half of your bat. Oh, I'm overhead now. Okay, wait, which one are we on? <laughs> okay, okay. I'll stop smiling at the camera then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and, you know, and draw what how you want yours to be. I referenced a ton of bat pictures. Some of them have wings that come onto their legs. Some of them have wings that come right to their bodies. They can be a lot of different things. So take a look at some reference pictures. Um, but you need to, when you lay out your fiber, you just need to go bigger than this, kind of all around bigger. Not um, too much longer because it seems to shrink more this way then this way, so wider than the wing and just a little bit longer. So I'll show you, um, right, so on the other side of this, don't mind my other little sketch here, I, um, I just drew a simple wing and then I went about an inch and a half bigger than that all of the way around my project. Um, if you want the wings, see, here is a set that I made that came out like kind of longer, a lot longer than it needs to be. So that's a little weird because my points aren't lined up with the points of my, of my wing. <laughs> but I've been able, like I said, I've been able to just kind of manipulate it and get it to work. Um, but hopefully when I lay them out today, I'll get it better because um, this is my third set that I'm making and I did realize that it's shrunk more this way than this way. So I just needed to go wider here. If you want the silk to show on both sides, then I'm taking my time when I lay my fiber out to, um, to do a thin, thin layer of wool and some silk and then a more substantial even layer of wool and some silk and then the thin thin wool glue um, because you gotta you want it to look the same from both sides so you have to do these multiple multiple layers okay so the first thing we're gonna do I'm gonna work with the fiber that was in the giveaway because I want, you know, that's probably what most of you will have on hand. Although I did make a, um, a color. I was looking through that, the book and there are all kinds of colors. Like some of them are almost sort of like purpley pink or tan, you know, all different colors. So this one, I love mixing nut and ash together. Um, that's what this, this set has. Um, and I might even use like a silver on the fox. So I used um, 
nut and ash, and then, no, nut and hush, sorry. And then, um, sea mist? Yes. And sage, mm -hmm. um, tussa. I love these two colors. I just, this is the kind of thing that I just want to put that in everything. So that's what this set of wing has. And if Kyla is able to wet felt and John and I are able to manage the um, comments, <laughs> we'll be able to see how that looks. So that's kind of cool. Wait, is that silk? The purple? The, um, the hush and nut are merino. Fog is our... Oh, fog, fog. Yeah. Thank you. Fog and sage. So I'm going to use the coffee. You could use the bark if you wanted to go a little bit lighter. Actually, maybe that's what I should do because I've, I've made so many of them with coffee. Let's go a little browner. This one has the, um, this one is made with coffee, which is really dark. And the first layer I'm going to put out is like a very pulled apart thin, layer of wool because I want the silk to show through this. So I'm just pulling really thin bits. I have been enjoying the look of the, um, the wings that come down to the bat's legs. I'll show you, I'll show you, um, these examples. So this one doesn't. This little guy's wings are just <laughs> off to the sides. And then this one will be attached to his legs. So the wings come down and attach all the way to the legs. It looks a little more bat-like, I think. I loved the meme that someone posted of the rat looking in the sky at the bat and it said, um, it said, oh, an angel. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. That's my kind of humor. Okay, so super thin. Like I can see the, I can see the um, bubble wrap through there. And then I was doing the, um, fur as the outer edge because it's as the outer silk layer because it just dulls down the um, the soft fruit a little bit. And again, these are very thin, webby pieces. You don't want a ton of silk in your project. What? Someone just saw a bicep. That wet felting is making you svelte, they say. <laughs> My, who's bicep? Your My bicep. bicep. Why, thank you. Somebody who said she has old eyes is a little concerned about not being able to see the black armature against the dark wings. Which did look a little dark when you were holding them up together. I don't know right. what we're able to do for yeah. that in the face. If we maybe bring in a light, can, maybe for brighter, or um, just a thought. Yeah, maybe I can wrap the armature today in something a little lighter, like just for something lighter. Yeah. That would be probably great. Yeah. Or if you're using the twenty-two black. Like I'll mess up my bat for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It'll be great. It's their their uh, fingers. You do see like a contrast to the mm -hmm. membrane of the, okay, now I've got the um, soft fruit. Like I said, I'm using what was in the giveaway. You can use anything, you know, really anything. I, I, I see this sort of like as the dragon project, like have fun with it. You know, they're so, all so different. Doesn't have to be brown. It doesn't have to be black. Um, you can get with the wet felting tons of subtlety. So these first three layers are very, very thin. The next layer is the bulk of the 
of the wing is going to be the next layer of merino. Yeah, I do feel like it's a little... Kyla, will you try um, scooting that one in and just like turning mm -hmm. it up? If it's not... I think I turned it all the way up. Okay, sure. Okay. Now, I think... Oh, that's better, yeah. <laughs> I think part of the reason that my... Thanks, guys. That my, um, my other wing shrunk so much this way was because I was not consistently crisscrossing my fiber. And so it... It tends to shrink in the direction that it's um, like if I laid all my fiber like this, it would shrink onto itself. So I want to use nice, even brush strokes and crisscross this merino. It, we want it thin but consistent. And like I said, it's a bit of a vague wing shape. I'm not, um, I'm not trying to make all the little, um, <laughs> waves of the wing because once it's wet felted, you can sort of full it in the direction that it needs to go, um, and, and get those, or you can cut it. The light makes a big difference. Oh, good, good. Yeah, it does feel, it feels brighter. So as consistent as can be, so that we end up with a nice even piece to work with. So not, you know, no, not gossamer, like no holes in this, but you don't want any chunks either. So you did super, super light, then the silk, then this better, more substantial This layer. is the center okay. layer. So now we're gonna do silk. We're gonna go red, green, thin wool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're doing the opposite. Yep, yep. Right. A, a template, if you did make one, it is nice to make sure, you know, you have things even. Um, all right, so now we're back to soft fruit. You were just using bark, yes? I used bark, but I have made them with coffee. And this one, like I said, is the nut and hush. So we'll have three different sets. I try to take my... Um, my mulberry silk and just like really like not have too many lines you know sort of like try to get it to web um these are cool in in here it gives it a little bit of texture and kind of looks like veins i uh, don't worry about too much silk right here in the center because your um your body this gets covered with fur it gets attached to the back of the bat and then gets covered with fur. Yeah, it is a dark project. I didn't think about that as we were. Laura wants to know how the silk is not sticking to your fingers. Oh, I'm like, a, my skin is like a baby. Soft, soft and supple. I'm not, I'm all, I don't know why. Oh, look, see, there it goes, now it is. <laughs> Okay, and then a little bit of fur. Brown and green makes, um, red and green makes brown, so that this is a cool combo. I went a little heavy on that um, soft fruit silk, so I'm trying to keep this a little more on the thin side. I made some with hankies. Uh, I didn't want to do that today because not everybody will have those, but you could just 
you could like shape a hanky on each side of the wing. It gives it kind of a neat, weird structure. And then a tiny bit more uh, merino. So this we want real thin. It's just a web. Did you guys see all of the things we added to the calendar? I'm very excited. And I told my staff the very limited plan I had for the rest of the year. And then every day I come in with <laughs> another idea. Okay, that's good. Except for this gigantic silk blob. Should we list the supplies once this video posts, like in the description? A few people have asked about kits. Oh, okay. I, I thought I put you the supplies on, on the... Okay, okay. It is on our Facebook okay. page. Um, we may want to list it in the video description yes. as well. Yeah, and I'll go through it real quick. I'm gonna wrap the um I'm gonna wrap the armature in well I might use a different color today just to be lighter but I've been using carob it's not gray it's not brown it's not black it's like a really nice um a really nice complementary color to almost anything that you would do um mostly I've been using coffee and um bark or chocolate in the wings and then any silk that you like that you think um, looks good with that today we're using uh, soft fruit mulberry silk and fur tussa silk so that's the wet felting component is a merino and some silks then we've got the core and then in the giveaway for the fur we're going to combine the brown baby alpaca the cinnamon cinnamon tussa and the coffee merino and we're going to make a fur out of that you could buy you could use fur um you could use camel you could use irish bison wolf fur is already fur so if you have fur on hand you could shingle your bat with that and then you a little bit of a top coat in there because I am doing shingling. I'm not doing oh. you know all out okay. fur. Okay, Kyla. Somebody did ask if the December felt along is a surprise. Have we decided yet? Do you want to do the um, voile and then that way oh, okay. we the right now? Okay, should we just ask them? Well, I think you know. I think I know. I think, okay, I'll tell you what I was going to do. I was going to do the snowman vessels because those snowmen are so stinking cute and I only made it the one time. You, do you, oh, you're all by, oh, you <laughs> Could have been bad. Long arms to Stefano. Do you want um, what's that? Do you want some overhead? Um, yes. Yes, because we're going to make the armature now. Um, okay, so that's what I was thinking, because they're really cute, and I want I just um, selfishly want to make them. But I know the wet felting isn't for everyone, and we've been doing that a lot lately. So I think the other thing that I haven't made in a long time is bottle toppers. And that would just be really fun. And I do want to do more felting along <laughs> like actually felting together versus uh you know basically a live tutorial so 
that's what I'm thinking. And um, I think that would be really fun. And I haven't, the, the surprise component could be what kind of bottle topper? Like, you know, gnomes are super popular, but we could uh, we could try an angel, or since it's gonna be close to holiday season, um, we could do, um, you know, something holiday -y. Okay, I've got my notes, I've got my wires, and uh, let me think about what I should put. Let's try the stab it. I'll see if the stab it makes it, I got a nice big mega stab it here, if that makes it easier to see what I'm doing. Yes, I think it does. Oh, Kyla filled my brand new stab it, and it is, I like them she cool. likes some like fluffy. It's like taller than it is. Might be a little, a little, little much. Okay. I made an eight inch bat with 14 gauge wire and it just got huge. Um, this, these guys, I do feel like the, the wet felted wing does override the wire a little bit, but um, in terms of like how you pose it, you can pose it. It's a little tough to do the full on like wrapped up bat look. Um, cause the, the, the wool sort of has its own mind, but, um, it works. It all works. This is where we are. So, okay. We're going to take our first wire. Any questions so far, John? Okay. Um, did anybody else compliment me in any way? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> we're going to take our first wire and find the center. And just like our other armatures, this is going to be the nose and head and neck. And we want to twist two inches gently. Let me get my ruler. Okay. And then pretty much there's, they don't have much neck. Like you don't want to, I've got a little half an inch here, but you're pretty much making that candy cane with a little, um, I think the chicks are like this with a little hook to the nose. So like a thumb print here and then a bend up to make the nose at 90, 90 degrees to the neck. Then we find the center of our second wire. <clears throat> oh, this armature does have a little twist. Pun intended. You're getting a lot of compliments now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shameless. I was really just trying to be funny. It's, it's because of my happy. It's because of my happy pants. What's How long are the wires? Oh, these are eight, uh, 18 inch, 22 gauge wires. Okay. The twist is that we're going to put the second wire on the back of the neck. And when we twist our shoulder, we're going to do one and a half because normally the second wire would also end up being the body and legs, but we need this long piece to end up being the wing. So, my little uh, guy is facing me. I'm putting the second wire on the back of his neck and I'm gonna twist towards me. So that's one time all the way around. And then I want the long one to end up in wing position and the short one to end up in um, leg position. Where is the clicker? Because I could zoom myself. Oh, it's right on the corner. A little bit. Okay. Will there be a December Cyber Friday Friday or just the Cyber Monday sale? Oh, good. We probably will not have a... Because we have two sales pretty much back to back, um, we probably won't have fit a Fiber Fairy in there. I zoom myself. Okay, other side. 
long wire forward towards me and then you want it to end up in wing position like that then these two come down to make the body and we want a two inch um, two inches from the base of the neck to the um, waist and I'm just doing two or three twists there two twists is good just so it's solid and then I do a little half inch hip <laughs> tiny little tiny little bat hips and then okay here is the here is the detail dilemma do you want toes <laughs> I, of course, do not want toes, <laughs> so I just have little, little paws. At this size, um, it's just, it's just a detail question. I'm going to get the other one down that has toes. He has five, four. I, I wimped out and did four toes on each foot. So if you would like toes, you're going to make a little palm triangle at two inches. If you don't want toes, I just make a little, like as if he's got a little paw going on at two and a half and just kind of make a little loop like that so that I'm gonna wrap this with wool. And that's what I'm doing today because there's like way too many other components to this project to be wrapping um, tiny toes. Okay, then we take our second wing wire and find the center. That's just so I know where it is, but it's pretty much gonna span, uh, go across the back of the shoulders. Just make sure you keep it centered. And then you're going to twist these two wires together. And I like to go in the direction that I wrap. So, And we want to twist them together four inches. I wish I could spin the camera around and show Kyla. She's over there wet felting away. You want me to? I'll reveal uh, <laughs> all our behind the scenes. <laughs> Maybe okay. if she's just rolling. Be approximately four inches. So you've got four inches here, and I've got four inches there, and I have a little bit more than four inches here, but that's okay. So I'm gonna twist this one. I'm gonna turn them around this way. Uh-oh, I froze really? on mine, yeah. You're not frozen for me. Okay, good. So it's my unstable internet connection. Okay. It's like doing a little bit of both. But that's probably just here, right? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Not sure Are you guys having freezing? Video freezing, that is. We want him to have a little elbow at an inch. So it's just a downward bend. They're just little, little mice in the sky, basically. Little angels. <laughs> little angels, little rat angels. Okay, we're gonna find the center of our, our fourth wire and cut it. I'm loving my wire straightener, by the way, and I'll show you how I've been using it um, besides to straighten wires. What? <laughs> what else are you using? Ooh, I'm it's sure a, you're, like, it's, stuff it's up a with mystery. It <laughs> do, do, do. Um, I'm going to show you. Okay. Now, I have to remember how I did this next thing. 
Twist the second wire four inches. Start at the elbow. That's this. If we want to do toes, what step on the digit would do? Oh, let me see if I wrote that down. Four toes I wrote down, third step, and I used half of a 32 gauge and I started at the near the ankle. So I, I, I twisted, you know, at the lower leg into the loop and then four toes um, on the third step. That's what I did. Okay, with our half of the fourth wire, we wanna start at the elbow. Follow your twist. Okay, this is what this is for. First of all, it holds it there better than your fingers does. So follow your twist, incorporate it into your twist. And then when you get up to where the thumb would be. Okay, so this is my wire straightener. The other, whenever you have a wire end that you're trying to incorporate into twisted wires, this kind of like smooths it and presses it down in there. If you've done this before on other things, you know what I mean. It can be kind of hard to get this tip um, to stay nice and tight in there. Okay. I want to make his little thumb. So I'm doing a half an inch. Oh, it's also really good for pinching, um, pinching wire together because of the rubber tip. And then I'm just, this is my thumb wire. This is my longer wing wire. I'm just giving these two a twist, um, you know, to make sure everything is stuck together. I could twist it again, I guess. There we go. So that is how that goes. Okay. And then the other half on the other side, we've got a lot going on here. We've got our wet felting happening. We've got our armatures almost finished. I've got good coffee. Talbot's down there shipping away. John has streamlined our shipping um, Like, I don't know what to call it, process. And, um, I've also made it more complicated. But, no, you haven't. Only in the meantime. And we have people helping us answer questions. Nice. <laughs> in the absence of our captain, our community is addressing the questions. All right, it's armature wrapping time. Yay. Okay, so Carob, should I use gray maybe? Something a little lighter? Oats, I got oats. I think any contrast then for the face shapes would really help. Okay. Like if you do oats. Okay. If you end up finishing this one with all the Yeah, so oats would be good if I ended up using the light wings. Um, because I stitched the wing on, you'll want to wrap the fingers in either a merino or core, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter what type of wool you use, but in a color that you like next to your, next to your wing. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is just wrap the top because this all is gonna have the wing fold over it. But these two fingers and the thumb, you might wanna consider, um, you know, consider what you're using. So I'm gonna take about a six inch piece and split it in half. My, my wool is on the thin side. Um, but we need to get a bit of fiber onto 
this armature um, so that when we do stab and stitch our wings on, it has something to stick to. And when I sew them on, I try to grab a little bit of this fiber. So it doesn't have to be like super skinny, um, but you don't want it real bulky either. So I'm kind of stretching my half a piece of core wool out. I'm gonna skip the thumb for now because I may decide to use a different color. Oh, John, are you able? I can reach it. I need to turn, I should turn this wax on. Okay. <laughs> we are so wired up here. It's on, it should be on as long, yeah, I think so. Wait. Yes, thank you. Um, a little tacky wrap helps on this. So my kids have um, outgrown Halloween, although Max is at school um, in college and I'm sure there'll be some shenanigans there, but. And I don't have anything going on. Do you guys have anything going on? Are you dressing up? Are you coming to work dressed up? Um, I don't know. We should I'll have probably a... come up with a really low effort joke. Right here. <laughs> How about you, Kyla? Unknown still. So... I miss a nice uh, costume party. I haven't done that in a long time. Um, I put a little bit of tacky wrap on the end of this. How's that going, Kyla? Um, you just sort of roll it up and... Yeah. I could show how I like tried to shape the wings a little bit. Sure. Okay. Should I come over there, John? Is that the easiest thing to do and just swing this camera around for a second? I can swing it around. Okay. We sh you can put it on the um, front facing one. Yeah. Um, so Kyla has the wings rolled like pretty well felted so i'm going to show how i started sort of shaping them let me finish out this piece of Oh, <laughs> our tripod is like not intuitive. Uh, yeah. Oh man, I'm all lit up now. <laughs> like, my white shirt is like, hello. <laughs> and I'm squinting. <laughs> But we need you guys to see. Okay, so we're gonna sp spin the camera around, hopefully, and um, and it's gonna be a little darker. It's gonna be very dark. <laughs> but it's gonna be worth. Maybe the camera will adjust. Maybe it that's will, what it does. Yeah. If everybody has to bear with us, you know. Yeah. Oh, these are, these are good. I don't know about the shape, but yeah. <laughs> so I, if I put my armature here, I can see where the um, the fingers go, and I can. Uh oh. Uh oh. We lost the feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other one's still on. It's too improvisational. <laughs> I'm stressed. I'm, I'm stressing hopefully, John out. Hopefully it'll come back. Oh, and can they hear me? Okay, I think it's gonna come back. Um. Yeah, you should there probably you go. shouting. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, talk over your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And so, we, I can see where these little um, changes in the, <laughs> in the wing should be. And with a soapy hand, you can felt in that direction. <laughs> in that direction. 
and start to get the wing shape a little bit. I'm not going to go like too crazy on this. <laughs> Chat one. says video is back, sound is well, bad. <laughs> you lose the mic. Bats don't like that much light anyway. Mm. Oh, people are having fun <laughs> going along for this ride. <laughs> anyway, that's how you do it. You just concentrate um, on making these little... little webbed areas between um, between the fat fingers. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> oh my gosh, so funny. Can you just uh, get all that? Just set everything up, just like it needs to be. Well, it'll be what happened with <laughs> I just watched it spin around. <laughs> it, was, nauseating, right? it was. And oh, and here comes the light. <laughs> and it was like all oh, oh, the like at least our corner isn't too much of a dark no, secret. <laughs> looks good over there. Um first I cut my hair myself. Do you, you don't do that. Oh no. I don't have that much hair to <laughs> spare. <laughs> do you ever like you're getting ready to go out and you're like, oh no, this won't do. And so I just started cutting and then I looked real cute that day. And then the next day I realized you need this. I needed, I needed my friend Lori. So I called Lori and she's like, how much of an emergency is it? But she got me in the next day and um, she's like, basically, you cut the style out. I looked just like, it was just like, rrr, rrr. like I just looked like a little Dutch boy. Like. I'm sorry, everyone. The stream is not good. It's perfect, John. I'm going to take another six-inch piece and split it in half. Got a lot of self-hair cutters in the show. Okay. We do. If we end up making like a bat kitten tutorial, we may have to refill. Oh, no, this is perfect. <laughs> and I'm wrapping um, the head. First, I'm just going to go out to the nose and back. My little candy cane head. Real tight because they have a nice little petite nose. I, I, I end up making like, well, I've only made two to completion, but they're kind of cute. Um, there are some super scary bats. If I have more, I start to do the um, the crisscross to fill in the back of the head shape. John, can we flip over? <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Ooh, okay, we're gonna do each little leg. I have this other half of my six inch piece. I'm gonna split it in half. <clears throat> and go down each leg. Oh, hot. Okay. Was there any excitement over bottle toppers? <laughs> Oh. I mean, I really just think it'll be fun to make, like, to work together. and Such a good gift. It is. So a friend told me about a vineyard in New Jersey called Sky Shoot. I'll look it up. And I was looking at the website and it's super cool. It's like a scientist started it. He invented some, it sounds made up. I, I mean, I'm, I'm telling a bad story here, but first let me just tell you the name of it because that's terrible that I'm, I'm like trying to talk about something that I don't even know the name of. There's bottle topper excitement. Also the tree bottle toppers mm. fun. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Yes, bottle. Sauce. Sky Acres, okay? Sky Acres Vineyard or Winery in New Jersey. And they're very environmentally um, 
conscious and no herbicides, no extensive, like no irrigation. Um, I'm not retaining everything that I read before I had coffee about it this morning, but it was really cool. No, <laughs> no sulfates. Okay. Um, but the catch is they only ship into New Jersey. So if you live in New Jersey <laughs> and you need to come to Serafina, <laughs> let me know. And if you are a legal drinker. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the body and I'm gonna go a little longer, more like eight eight or nine inches. Still gonna pull this in half, it's just more manageable. Um, okay, we'll start at the bottom. I'm gonna work my way up, and, but because it's a tapered shape, it could be hard to wrap. So doing the crisscross over the shoulder, around the body, over the shoulder, the other way is the way to go when you're wrapping um, a chest shape like this. It's the same thing that we do on the other animals. And I'll do that again, I think. I might turn it over and do it this way. I feel like that'll give me a more consistent result. Um, do you want to rinse those? Oh, yeah. There's some excitement about the wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't drink very often, but lately I've thought, um, it would be nice to have some stuff on hand and that's everyone. We don't drink often, but lately <laughs> But lately I'm gonna develop all kinds of bad habits. <laughs> Wait, no, sorry, I didn't mean to turn this into another alcohol stream. <laughs> Come out and force it to Okay. I like to do a little tiny hip and butt um wrap. <laughs> so that's about a six inch piece split in half. And I go around the waist first just to get it going. And then you go around this little hip area across the butt, around the little hip area across the front, around the little hip area across the butt, around the little hip area across the front. That's, that's probably enough. We don't want a hippie bat. <laughs> and he needs a belly. Every bat needs a belly. I'm gonna take a six inch piece and leave it whole and then just fold. Fold a belly pillow and stab that on. And then I'll wrap it one more time. <laughs> Can you hear Kyla? <laughs> bottles for the <laughs> bottle toppers we're going to make. That's really what it's all about. I have another half of a six inch piece. I don't know how, um, but I'm going to wrap this one more time. Well, the oats is a nice contrast to the wire, but not so much to stab it. <laughs> You can decide if your bat is going to be a a big belly bat. Okay, what I use on the legs and fingers probably should be the same. 
And since I'm making this lighter bat, well, Kyla, I should probably use the dark wings, right? Because I'll be using the, I should use the dark fiber. All right, I'm going to wrap. I'm going to use the, the wings that I made, like the ones, um, not the light ones. So I'm going to wrap my um, thumb, fingers, and toes in uh, coffee. Ooh, my swax is on. I like to use my... I did it. I did it. Did you see that, Kyla? Yeah, I you used use my a, um, <laughs> use wire straightener. <laughs> you can use them for everything. You can. <laughs> Except, where is my... Here it is. Oh, I just put my big old head in the camera. A lot of jokes on here, and I'm missing them. Oh, that's funny today. I am Dutch. I don't understand the jokes. Don't explain. <laughs> <laughs> she just, just here. She just wanted to let us know <laughs> that they're lost. <laughs> I'm using a little swax. If you don't have swax, you can put um, uh, tacky wrap, but. Yeah, I was saying I'm going to use brown because I should do the whole thing brown. Well, you're going to switch to the next. Yeah. Yeah. The next one that's done, right? Right. Yeah, I think on these little thin ones, since you can't really felt it, it's nice to have the, um, it's nice to have the swax. Probably didn't get quite enough fiber here. Hopefully I do. I'm not bending the ends of these wires around because I'm using the swax. Um, I feel like usually I'm able to get the wire bit covered pretty well. Yeah, I didn't have quite enough fiber there. I'm really glad I wore a tank top. I'm very Warm. hot. <laughs> yes. Swax is the bomb. I just had a mess and it's just super neat Clean now. Clean it up. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put, since I had a couple of pieces put together there, I'm gonna put a little bit of help on there for me. I think I'm using bark right now i don't remember if it's bark and coffee are really close i think i'm using bark right now coffee's darker coffee's dark yeah all right i need to have a slightly bigger piece than i took Really, you'd want to use the color that you use predominantly in your wings to be um, wrapping those it's just or not necessarily. Whatever you want. These don't get more wool on them the way that I've been making them. So you want this to either coordinate or contrast the way you want it to the wings. Um, if you want them to disappear, mm. then yes, use the color that's predominantly okay. in your wings. If you think it's cool for them to show, like, you know, then you can use a complementary color to the, or, you know, a con slightly contrasting color to the wings. 
Patty Boy is asking, can you use a silk, like a scarf material base to build on top of to get the wings more sheer? Like a Nuno felt? Yeah, if they wanted them. Yeah, that would be really fun. That's kind of what the hanky did, but the silk material really gives you the consistency mm. that, um, yeah, I haven't done much Nuno felting. Okay, so there we have, um, there we have that wing wrapped. I guess I don't need to do, duh, Kyla, I'm not going to work on this one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't keep up with our own selves. So I need to wrap the legs. So I could have done it in a lighter color. If you're going to use those light wings. Yeah. I'm saying I'm not making this one today. No, I'm you're making switching. this one today. Yes. yes. So now I have dumb brown. <laughs> I'm not going to wrap his legs in brown because maybe I'll switch this to a lighter to go one with light to wings. go with my light wings. Yeah. Okay. But you would wrap the leg and foot in the same color that you did the fingers. Um, but now... I'm ready to show you how the wings go on. Mm -hmm. See, we're moving right along. Okay. I'm finished with this wax. Sorry for my head. I'll grab the other wings. <laughs> I do have notes about how this is supposed to go down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's see Kyla's wings. Maybe they're better than the ones that I made. They're really yours. That's the light one. Oh, weird. This one turned wacky. Okay. This one, I feel like I need to felt more. Oh, no. Yeah, I think it has a lot of silk in it, and so it, um, for, if I were going to cold wax it. Oh. Okay. Probably. Um, okay, so that's, but that's cool looking. This one you said turned weird? I feel like this just the shape. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a little wacky. This one's really nicely, tightly felted, though. That one felt very thick when I was yeah. working. I guess I should have worked it more. Oh, that's cool. This is the coffee one. This is maybe a little loose, too. Man, I thought I was rolling them and rolling them. I know. I think I probably used a little bit too much silk. But this is nice. Um, but that's the ones that I want to put on here. Let's see. This is the ones that I want to put on. This guy. So... Okay, so you find the center. You do want the wings dry. They're mostly yeah, dry. These are mostly dry. And I'm just kind of tugging this, you know, the way that I need it to go a little bit. This is great. Okay, I think it's easiest to make a tiny little hole where you want the thumb to go. Then put the thumb in there. Oops, I didn't quite make a hole. I need my snips, really. And then just start to work this upper edge around they have a membrane, oh, thanks. They have a membrane that goes to the back of their neck. So you could just leave this going across to the back of their neck. You could put, um, I 
You can put a pin. I have a needle and thread. A couple of pins. And I will zoom here. I will zoom. Awesome. So you can put a pin or two while you stitch. It's nice to pin these guys into place because they want to move around a lot. John, your computer is not happy. Uh, it's really not. It's like... Actually. Yeah, we're having some uh, quality issues with that overhead camera, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Really? It's mad at our felt along. The sewers might want to close their eyes. <laughs> All you seamsters out there. Okay, I can't really work on this side because I have not wrapped these wires yet but I'll show you uh, the way that I stitched it um, you probably would not uh, wouldn't be surprised if you do a better job than I did on the wing um, I start with my knot hidden under the flap on the wing I'm just going I'm just going back and forth from the back to the front and just trying to get a little bit of the um, of the wrapped armature in there. I'm not going to show too much of this. I'm not going over the top of the of the um, wing wire. I'm just staying underneath it and going from the back to the front like so. On the fingers, I do go over the wire. And I'll show you that real quick. I'm not gonna do too much, like I said, because I'm probably gonna take this apart and use a color that actually coordinates. Have you tried heat and bond? I have not. That would be a good. Would be an option. Yeah, maybe. Trisha said a running stitch. There's a lot of ways to do this, probably. Yeah. But you're gonna want some kind of stitching, not just trying to felt them on. I did one just felted. It just it, it doesn't look as good, and it's not as um, well put together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially if your wing, if your wing is really, you know, pretty well felted, which you want it to be if you're going to use the cold wax. Um, then stitching is definitely the way to go. So on the finger wire, I'm going behind the wire and over it every every time. So basically, I am going over the wires. So this, it's nice to really coordinate because you're gonna see a little stitch going over these wires. So I just go behind the wire every time and the thread 
is basically going around the wire. Loop-de-loop, -loop. like that. So you need to do out the top wire and then down each finger wire. And then um, you can decide on the legs later because the, the back of this is gonna get well felted to, um, to the bat's back. And then you can decide where you want the legs and how you want this look to be. I'm gonna put that off until the rest of the bat is finished. So after you have done that, you have this cooking show. <laughs> it's your moment. Yeah, and now we can have a little bit of fun. I mean, I've been having fun, but now we get to make the face and stuff, and that's fun. So you stitch down all the little. Yeah, you stitch I stitched down each. Down of those. Each. I don't know if they can see. It's so dark. Stitch down each of these. Yeah. And I didn't do anything to the legs yet because I just want to see what happens there. Okay. I have not made a bat face in a while. <laughs> so let's see how good my notes are. Um, let me show you how to felt the fluff because... Um, or to card the fluff because you might want some of that for your bat's face. And I pre-made some. This is my brown fluff. They are so many colors. They're golden, they're dark, they're gray. Um, I'm like I said, I'm using what was in the giveaway, but you could blend any colors that you like together. Let me work on here because I think the contrast is good. Yeah. So this is um, bark. alpaca which is really super similar in color and the cinnamon tessa so this will give us a nice a nice fur What's happening? It's so quiet today. Still a lot of jokes. There are a oh, lot good. of jokes. <laughs> good. <laughs> Tell me some jokes. While I blend. Hang on. What restaurants do vampires avoid? Mm, I don't know. Steakhouses. <laughs> S-T-A-K-E. Max wanted to study abroad in Slovenia. That's very vampire -y. I think it would be. I think that sounds amazing. Which circus performers can see in the dark? Does this have to do with bats? Mm-hmm. It's so obvious when you know the answer, but I don't know what. <laughs> the acrobat. Well, I was going to say that, and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Bark came in the Fiber Fairy giveaway, yes? It was in the bundle mm -hmm. with the alpaca and the silk. Unless I'm mixing it up with chocolate. <laughs> Which I often do. <laughs> yeah. 
the alpaca and the silk gives your fur like that that fur look so it won't it won't uh, felt as much but the merino gives us what we need to felt it without mm. they got coffee merino they got coffee as a bundle and chocolate is in the chocolate bundle. okay okay not bark chocolate So just a quick back and forth that should be enough. So now I have three piles of fluff. Hopefully that's good. Okay, let me see what, what is needed next. Mm. You know what we didn't say because I'm a ding dong is that when you make your wings, it's good to make two sets of wings and then a little extra piece. But chances are you could cut a piece off of your wings. But if your wings are perfect and they don't need to be cut, this piece is pretty good. Mm -hmm. This one came out good. Um, except I didn't do silk on the back side. Uh -huh. But for ears, yeah, these are good for ears. Okay, this is kind of like a raccoon face. We're gonna make um, a carob taco. So, two inch piece, so I'm kind of stretched into a two inch square. Stab the center. Fold it over, give it a little stab, stab. All right, that's gonna be his forehead. Then we need three seeds. So let's take another sort of healthy two inch piece and split it into three pieces. If you have a face ace, this is a good time for that. The seeds are going to be um, the little muzzle on the side. And I don't know why I have a third one yet, but I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> it's gonna be a muzzle on each side and something else to Three, this is a little bit much wool. Four, I'm gonna stop there. Let's see if I can make it a little smaller this way. One, two, three, four. I'm using just at the bottom second inch of my faces. And I'm going to make another one because I wrote it down, but I'm not seeing what shape this is yet. One, two, three, four. Maybe it's a little nose bridge or something. Then we need a tiny little black nose. So I've got some black core. And I've just got a thin, a thin two inch strip. And I'm gonna wrap the tip of the face ace as tightly as I can. Oh, I did write it down. It does say nose bridge. Two, this is a real small little seed. Okay. Let's start putting a little face together here. The first piece is going to go around the head <laughs> like a bonnet. Um, I'm trying to remember what we 
did this on. Do you mind grabbing oh. one of my the little rice rice yeah. bags? Awesome, thank you. So first I'm gonna center it and stab it. Right where the head changes from forehead to nose. And then I'm gonna bring these around and let them meet underneath. Um, I should bring up a reference picture. I was looking at fruit bats just because they're on the cuter side. They look like little flying foxes. I think that's their nickname even. So he's got a little E.T. look right now. And I can stab this just a little bit more. We don't need it to be quite so poofy. We do this on the hedgehogs too, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Stabbing a little bit of the fluff down around the head here. Then each of these seeds is a cheek, a muzzle, like a little muzzle on the side. So you want the fluff to come over your Hang on a sec. taco piece. You okay. Oh, no, you're right. Little bit of freezing. Yeah, everybody's having it. It's, it's past it on the VS switch, I don't think. Okay. If we want to take a quick pause, uh huh. I can try sticking the USB port to the Google Plus Zoom too. Okay. Is that um, a problem? Well, it's, it's, I don't know if. It has been for you. For me, like it hasn't always been totally frozen, but it's been stopping and like just little know. bits. It's been a while though. Okay. Will it get back and looking okay? It seems like it's good. Okay, if it does it again, I'll try switching it. So I'm stabbing this little seed onto the side of his face. To give him a muzzle. And then I got to do the other one. I think my seeds are a little bit big. They're like kind of the size of my tip of my pinky and that might be a little, I might've made them a little smaller on my other foxes. I mean bats. I just got one on each side. Let's get the nose on, and then once the little black nose is on, I can put the, um, the nose bridge on. My nose is a little big too. Okay. I just made that smaller. No easy way to get a tiny little nose on like this. I just usually try to stab one end of the seed in this way and then turn it and stab the other end of the seed onto the top. And that gives them a nice little kind of pointy, that angle, that um, sharp angle that a dog nose has. Now my third seed is meant to be a bridge, a nose bridge. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit because I feel like it's a bit chunky. And then put that on. They are so many different ways. Some of them have like teeny tiny little beady eyes. Some of them have like Nice big fun eyes. Um, I basically am just trying to make like a little rodent head <laughs> of 
relative cuteness. Okay, I'm gonna start with um, black eyes and then you can make them gold or change them if you decide to. So the eye is gonna go like where our taco and our nose bridge and our cheek seed meet. So just on each side of that nose bridge. And I'm gonna just roll a tiny little black um, bit in my hand. Just try and make a little sphere if I can. And I like to use a strong single needle and stab it all in around the edges. And I realize it's hard to see. Two thirty, we're doing great. The sound's not good? No. I was wondering when it froze visually if they were still getting sound or if everything was choppy to hear. Oh, okay. But the sound is the sound is the sound keeps going. Okay. The video okay. just freezes a little. It's freezing um, from that camera specifically. It's freezing oh. because we're getting a bunch of data from both of the cameras and there's not enough bandwidth. Okay. Um, from the USB ports. Which is why So it's good to check your sculptures from the um, from the top down and see like how symmetrical it is. So one of my cheeks usually ends up, you know, and one of my eyes usually ends up more forward than the other. Um, but from the top down is a great way to to take a look at that and assess that. Um, I'm not going to make a, um, a chin or anything. They're just don't need it. They're so tiny. And my right side is never as well felted as my left. If you switch USB, will it end the feed possibly or not? Um, I mean, everything will disappear, but it should come back. Cause that's what should we switch? Happening. Like people won't have to no. log out okay. and log back in. So it's we're probably going, worth it. Okay. A little, it's just a little choppy as you work. Okay, so we're going to switch... Um, Switch our cameras real quick. I think just USB or camera. It is the. I it think is he's hooked. just talking about cords, not cameras. R right, but we're switching which cord goes to which. We're you, we're gonna disappear for a second, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but we'll be right back. Don't go away. They can use that sonar. Yes. Oh. Oh, good. You can hear me. <laughs> you can hear me walking around looking for a tissue. <laughs> Apparently the choppiness makes you a little slower, which is good for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. I have always like, you know, I'm assuming that not many people are, you know, trying to work, work along. trying to work along, but, um, it's a, it's a toss up between a four hour video and getting through it. Like, okay. Same bat channel. But he's gonna be cute. He is very cute already. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the one that you were walking. Do I look like like a sighting of big uh, Bigfoot? <laughs> and stab it. Do we? Will do? You know what I don't have here. What do you need? I Bear need um, I need wax paper. Okay. And um, I had a palette knife. You might have to look in my oil painting okay. stuff. Is there wax paper in that room? 
I think the wax paper, I don't, there's parchment paper up there, which would be fine. Okay. I'm back. Okay. It was worth a shot. <laughs> I'm like super zoomed. Okay, good, good, good. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for your. Oh, man. Yeah. I want to talk to you about it after. Okay. <laughs> He's starting to be cute. Okay, we need little eyebrows. Oh, let's do the ears. Let's put some ears on there. So I have my extra fabric and their ears are all different sizes too. So I'm just going to cut a rectangle. I'm just going to make two pieces and stack them up and then cut them together so that I know they're the same. Oh, and I kind of like what's going on here. So if I go with something like this, you know, a right angle with a curve underneath, that's gonna give me a pretty big ear. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm just gonna fuzz this side out. You can use a tool uh, brush to do this. And then my cut edge, I'm gonna stab in on itself just to reinforce it because my wet felting is not super tight. I don't even know what I got. Okay, thank you. Paper. Okay. Yes, those will work great. Thank you. Is this something you've used or not? I don't know what that, all right, but thank you. Okay, you need to be able to hear. Do they hear the bugs? The bugs? Yeah. They hear the bugs, right? Oh, I thought I'd see that chat. I thought you had the people on the yeah. <laughs> There's no, There is a fly <laughs> around. <laughs> it's been bugging me. Oh. The sonar, I don't think they see, do they? Well, they don't. That's where blind as a bat comes from, right? That's a myth. They're it's not a blind? Myth? Yeah, they're not blind, but they just hang out in the dark. That's why they have to look too. Oh. Ooh, yeah, let's get some bat myths and facts. Bat facts. We've had Judy on jokes. I'm like sitting back enjoying that. We need some bat proverbs. Good luck getting your ears on evenly. <laughs> they do locate the bugs with sonar yeah wasn't there a guy a young man who was blind and he started clicking he would go like and then he could sonar he could echolocate things around him yeah, yeah hmm. it's pretty crazy What makes him batty looking? Okay, ears are stabbed. He needs little brows. <laughs> what? He's cute. <laughs> I'm taking some of my fluff. This might be a little too floofy. Maybe I'll use uh, chocolate. You guys don't see me felt with so much merino very often. Sue Bingham saw it. She said he also rode a bike. Wow. Okay. All right, we got some facts coming in. Over 1,100 species of bats worldwide. Jeez. 
They can live for 30 years hmm? and fly at 60 miles an hour. What? That's horrifying. <laughs> you are not You're outrunning not that. <laughs> okay, I've got some... If you have brown core or any coordinating core that you would like to use for your eyebrows, I'm using Merino because uh, that's what I've got here. And I'm just making a little fringy shape on my face ace. I'm going to stab it before I put it on. Baby bats are called pups. Cool. And they can eat 1,200 mosquitoes an hour. Wow. That's awesome. Whoa. For real? You gotta give him a bigger belly if he's Are there that, that many, many mosquitoes? mosquitoes? I think there's a lot of mosquitoes. Bill wants bat houses in our yard to help with the mosquitoes. I don't, I'm not creeped out by bats. They do a lot of swooping. I'm not about to throw my ex under the bus, but he's heard this story many times and he would think it was funny. But when I was first getting to know him, we stayed, we lived in what was my grandparents' house on my dad's farm. And he was, this would be better in the face on camera because <laughs> I will gesticulate. But um, he was leaving the kitchen, entering the mudroom. And it's a 90 degree turn in like a tiny little laundry room to do that. And I was in the kitchen. And he, so he opens the mudroom door and he went, this is going to be loud. <laughs> he went, ah! like a, like a really like high pitched, oh, I scared Oliver. And, um, and, but with, along with that, leapt back against the, uh, laundry room closet door, like three feet, wow. like in, like slammed into the wall. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And like a little bat. <laughs> was in the mud room, <laughs> but was it flying? Yeah, it was flying. I mean, it scared him. That's funny. And my dad had to catch bats in my house in that I grew up in in Wilmington. It was an older Victorian home, and um, I just remember my dad in the middle of the night running around like we were three girls, you know, and catching bats, catching bats. Um, your brow, they don't really have a brow, <laughs> but it just, it just softens their look a little. Oh man, I just put that one right on upside down. And one of my bats turned out a little angry looking and one of them turned out a little curious looking. And that is because of the brow, but you can decide what you want your expression to be. He who wants to fly like a bat must first learn to see in the dark. Proverb. This guy, I mean, I feel like they're like little superheroes. He's just like, let me at him. <laughs> They consume their body weight in insects every night. That's that is amazing. A serious mosquito binge. If you had to consume your body weight in something, what would it be? Not mosquitoes. Hmm. I see. This is why I don't use merino. It's all weird and poofy. Probably Krispy Kreme donuts. <gasps> it's not like a. It's. A, <laughs> if I had to you eat, you need to you need to consider your health. <laughs> it's not like you're gonna die on an island. What's the last I'm thing you eat? I'm never gonna eat my body weight in anything. If I'm going to, I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> oh, I'd get so sick. You would. Ugh. All right, have fun with your little bat face. Uh, mine looks like a little dog meets a mouse. It's time for floof. Bats? I love their little knees too. Like they have these little, little leg, bow legs. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start on the back because that's the easiest place to see and to get started. And I'm just going to start right on his butt. 
Will you add more merino to cover some of the seams? If there's any seams that people can see on the face or... Yes, I'm sorry. I'm not finished here. Um, we're going to use some of the fluff. Like okay. to... Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So like his under, under when chin I, and all. Yeah. Like sometimes when I make a face, I'd have to get away from it for mm -hmm. a second. Okay. So we're going to take our fluff. And since I'm shingling, I am not cutting this. Like I'm using the length of it. Um you know, to get some distance here. So here's his butt. I'm gonna put the fringe just off his butt. I'm gonna stab the center one third. And on my other bats, like I changed color. I started brown and then went golden. Um, some of them have like a real golden um, neck and then, you know, darker. They're, like I said, there's so many different ways they can be. A tiny bit of um, core wool in here isn't a bad idea. I'll use, um, I'll just use a little bit of carob, but just a tiny little fringe going in the same direction that the fiber is going. Okay, bats hibernate and they can survive being encased in ice. Wow, whoa, that's amazing. So I'm going right through the wet felted, um, the wet felted wings. So now that I've got his butt covered, I'm going to do two sections like on each side. And I'm working with little sort of one inch strips. Like you don't want to, you don't, this is a small project. You don't want to try to cover too much too quickly. So my center inch is up from the first one. I'm, I'm shingling, I'm going up just a little bit. I'm gonna put my little bit of core fluff that gets hidden in there, but helps felt. I'm kind of letting this wrap just around the side a little bit. All right, bat sizes. They can range from the bumblebee bat. Oh, the bumblebee bat. Who pointed that out to us? Um, uh, uh, um, Patty Cornelius. Okay. Who sent the email? She sent yeah. the email with the link. Yeah, it was Patty. Um, that weighs less than a penny. Yeah, it's like it's this this big. So tiny. To the flying yeah. fox in the South Pacific that has a wingspan of up to six feet. Oh my gosh, that's huge. <laughs> That is huge. Oh, Mary sent the email? Wasn't it Patty? Oh. Why was I so sure about that? I'm sorry. It was Mary, I have it. Okay, I'm sorry. In her Batty for Bats group. Yes, yes. That was amazing. That was really, really if you cool. you want to work tiny. There's a lot of bat stories. People have had bat run-ins. Oh yeah. Someone's husband caught a bat and let the kids take it to school. <laughs> and it got out in class. Aww. We need a bat documentary like um, like My Octopus Teacher and Fantastic Fungi. I bet they're like super remarkable for the environment. Mm. I mean, everything is. Everything relies on each other, but it would it's just, you know, a kind of mysterious animal that it would be interesting to learn more about.
So my um, my fluff here, I'm gonna just hop up for one second and see if I can get find some brown core um, so that I can show you how I finish off the face. But um, this I would kind I would comb out, floof out, because he doesn't need all that, right? I mean, unless that's like a certain look you're going for, your little um, mohawk bat. <laughs> but if you pull it out, then you can trim it. And then comb it down and he'll look a little more, um, it looks a little more just fur-like and not quite so, not quite so crazy. I got a little bit of long ends over here. This is why I pretend to think I can cut my own hair. <laughs> Laura's maiden name was Batsel. So in oh, school, fun. her nickname was Bats. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So he's got a nice little furry back now. And you will want to pet your bat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take some of this fluff, and I'm going to look for, um, hopefully I have a little bit of brown core back here. I'm gonna make it work. Let me get you brown cord. No, I think some back it's there. okay. I've got some cinnamon and carob. I just what I want to do is blend some core with the fluff for the face. Okay. So I'm just making a color here. So this is cinnamon and carob only because I don't have brown. <laughs> if you have brown, <laughs> if you have brown, use brown. I'm gonna put a little bit of merino and a little bit of my fluff. This is what I should have used for the eyebrows. Mm. Yeah. That green comb is the clover claw. The claw. It's a claw and a mat cleaner. The other side you can use to brush off fiber from your stab it. Okay. So with this fluff, I can blend. I could do one more piece of fur here, but I'm gonna just kind of keep moving on. I can blend the back of the head to where the fur begins. And this further locks in my um, my ears. I can do a little, I'm gonna do a little taco cheek I'm gonna just take this piece of fluff, center it under the eye. I feel like I've just got shadows. Um, center it under the eye. Stab that line in. And then fold it down and let the fringe blend away the um, the shapes that we made. And then you can decide, you know, do you want to trim that? Do you just want to felt it around? But that, that kind of fold over gives you a lot of options. I would probably fur the stomach first because you want the the pieces that you put on the face to overlap, you know, what um what you put on uh, the I... on the stomach. But I'll just do the other side.
cool. It's going to be fun to see these. Mm -hmm. Someone come on just said a terrier bet. Looks got a little terrier look. Yeah, <laughs> they do look like dogs. I really should. Uh, the one totally looked like Milo should as you were making it. He did look like Milo. Mm -hmm. This one. Was it this one? He did look like Milo. So funny. I'm going to put this fluff on here because I'm going to try to blend away my weird merino eyebrows here. Don't use merino. <laughs> so cute. I'm trying to give him a little more of a pig nose. Up a badger bat. The flying fox is very cute. The flying fox is cute. It's kind of big. It would freak me out in person, I think. Have you seen the videos where like they're giving the baby bats the milk bottles and stuff? <laughs> no. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. Let's talk about bat babies. Let's talk about when are bats having their babies? How are the baby like are they in there like nursing? Do they have tiny little bat memory? <laughs> they must the only flying they're the only flying mammal. They're mammal. I don't know about bat babies. Somebody's bats in their backyard had babies. Wow. I love the floof. I love their fur. It's so cool. That's like people usually only have one baby at a time. Okay. Sometimes they have twins. And they are born without hair. Okay. So bald, <laughs> lonely babies. They grow up fast. Some are flying and hunting on their own within a month. Where do they hang out until then? Like, are they just clinging on or are they in a little room? <laughs> Do bats have nests for babies? You guys, my bat needs a little bit of help, but I was having um, wool supply, wool supply issues. <laughs> well, really planning, um, planning issues. That's that's usually what it is. <laughs> They nurse them with milk until they're old enough to eat on their own. They get three to four weeks. Wow. Do I need to fluff the whole stomach? Or can we move on to wax? Because you guys know how to do the same thing on the front, right? I think they know how to do the same thing. Yeah. And a and tiny... And you just go, what do you do up to the chin? Oh, um, my, my um, cheek oh, fluff went chin. under there. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, I mean, you're just gonna, you're gonna shingle up to here. And like I said, it's kind of good to do the shingling and then get just the last bits of um, top coat on your face because that can go over, that fringe can go over your final, your final shingle. And then you can go for more detailed eyes or just the little white. Yeah, dot so eye. this little white, I did um, this one, I did just little white dot in the eye <laughs> he's got more space between his ears his ears are farther set on the side of his on the side of his head than the one I just made and I kind of like that so I might kind of encourage these off to the side a little bit um, and then this guy the I put um, gold in there and the little white dot <laughs> so but yeah so same thing i furred from the bottom up to underneath the chin here and then um your top coat color can can cover that uh, mary Marin said that baby bats hang out in bat sinets <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect so this one, 
Uh, they want the wax. There's some... Yeah. There's this some one wax. has the wax on the wing. And you can just see it's catching a little bit of shine. And it just makes it um, a little bit stiffer, a little like leathery. Totally um, just an option. You know, not... It's just... I just like it changes... It says this is fur, you know, and this is membrane. Like I like that we have that option to change the wool. Um, I will wax a set of wings and show you how I did it. I am at, like I said, I'm at the tip of the iceberg with experimenting with the cold wax. I'm working on a gorilla and um, I think it's gonna work really well for the chest and and the face because swax mm. is a little heavy. It's great for what it does, but I would not swax a large area. Okay. It's too heavy. It, it um, you know, it's a little bit too hard to totally control how thick it is. So, so this is cool and um, I'm still playing, like I said, with how with the technique. How I'm doing it, I've been using a palette knife to kind of really smooth and shove it in there. And um, and then I used an iron. When Sabine and Delisa were here, they showed me Clover, the company that makes some of our felting needles and stuff, uses uh, makes a craft iron. Oh, I, is right, it linked? that little iron. I, I think I we linked did we it. Get one? We did get one. I don't think it's linked. I don't know okay. that I heard Okay, we're uh... going to link it to the Goods and Faves page. Um, it it has, it's like a handheld thing, and then it has attachments. And the attachments um, look like different shaped, like little palette knives. And so when you iron, you can really get, you know, into different areas. And I felt like the iron helped lift out if there was excess um, cold wax I put a piece of parchment paper on each side of the wing and ironed it and it just lifted out a little bit of the extra cold wax someone's asking if it's stinky it's not it's water-based okay the um, the oil-based does the, have okay. it's, it's the oil-based is flammable it does have a smell and it's um, um, doesn't dry as okay. as well and it's harder to clean up. This one has a seal. Isn't that funny? Hmm. Sometimes they've had seals and sometimes yeah, they weird. haven't. Oh, my hairy wax. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen. Uh, yeah. So it's real um, thick, as you can see. It's kind of like a, it's a paste. Um, but the palette knife, I think, is the best way. And it goes on white. But what I like about the palette knife is it really, you can really press it in. And it makes it real easy to get into all of the corners and stuff. And scrape off the extra. Got to stretch this guy's little wing out here. So you're on top of parchment. I'm just working on, this is wax oh, paper. Wax but paper. I don't really want to iron on wax paper, I don't think, because it has wax. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you want to iron on a uh, craft paper or a parchment paper. And it takes a couple of hours. Um, it will dry mostly clear. And then, like I said, the ironing like lifts out the extra. And you said you use parchment. You put the parchment on it and iron over the parchment. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And I would put, because I'm going to wax both sides, I would put paper on both sides of your wing. Okay. When you iron it, so that your ironing board doesn't get, okay. you know, all messed up. It does look like Crisco. 
It does look like Christo. <laughs> it smells like crayons. <laughs> Just make sure you kind of pull your fur out of the way. I don't worry about getting like, you know, super close to it. So yeah, I'll keep playing with this, you know, and see what we can do. What I thought was if you were making something bigger and you needed to power text, let's say a beak or a, mm. a big talon, what I'm wondering is if this polishes power text off better than swax would. Okay. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to try that. And if it were, let's say it were on top of something um, stiffened like power text. You can buff it, like you can make it shiny. But you can see why, like the the better felted your pieces, like the the better this is going to go on. Does it matter how? you put it on yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't glob it on like I'm trying to get I'm trying to get extra off um, you know I don't want big white chunks of it tell that was like a ninja no steam in the iron right just dry yes how hot um, I was using that craft iron, oh, okay. um, so I didn't don't remember the setting. Um, probably something medium-ish. So that's that. I wish it takes a couple hours to dry, um, so I don't have one to show you. You know, at that stage, it is kind of fun ironing it. It feels like feels like a satisfying step. Oh boy. So funny. Can you dilute it to make it thinner? Um, do you want it thinner? I don't, I think kind of the point of the medium is this consistency, but, um, I'm sh it's water-based. I'm sure you can, you can mix it with paint. Um, there's a lot of tutorials about this you know, on YouTube, especially in terms of painting. Um, don't have all the all the facts down pat on this new product people would like to see all of your bats when they're done yeah okay we'll <clears throat> hold them up oh like now or like uh put pictures and everything yeah to post them yeah yeah judy said we're just gonna let sarah's comment about hairy wax <laughs> hairy wax go <laughs> yes it wasn't, I opened my wax and it had like hair in it. Not hair, wool. It's wool. Right. Someone said we're politely ignoring it in, yeah. all, in all of its implications. It's, it's really fun putting this. I just love using a palette knife. Um, <laughs> it's really fun. Okay. I'm going to spill the beans on all my ideas. Oh, people are... But John! John. Not John. <laughs> John, there's two of us now. It's two against one. And she's still going to spill the beans. <laughs> Sometimes it takes me a while to pull together the... The ideas. The actual... We get there eventually. We do get there. 
All right, I'll John, we were talking about certification for like three years before it happened. <laughs> certification. And then everyone wants her to spill. <laughs> certification, by the way, is going very, very well. And um, I will be making a formal kind of like, you know, announcement about um, the new certified instructors at some point in November. I'm, uh, it's been a lot of work for us. Um, the list is building on the website. It's so, you can so yeah, definitely check instructor. out the website. Find an instructor, hopefully near you. Um, think about if it's the right, um, something that you would like, you know, to pursue teaching. You can find out more also on the website. Would it be easier to wax before adding the fluff? Um, maybe. There's so many steps to this, it's hard to say, like, the exact best order. Uh, let's see. So if you wax the wings, yeah, let it dry, then added the fluff. I guess it kind of depends on your mood. Like, oh, do I want to just wax my wings now? Do I need a break? And then you can wax your wings, let it sit overnight, iron it right. the next day. Um, add your fluff. Could swax his little nose. That would be cool. I tried adding um, brown pigment to one, and I added too much, and it looked like my bat um, had a run in with a mud, a mud pile. Um, so that wasn't successful. Okay. But I think it, I really think it's because I I just really added like too much brown pigment. I'm just gonna see if I can use the wax to clean up my little edges is, here. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm pretty excited about your ideas. Yeah, okay. I'm going to spill one. <laughs> I'm just going to spill one. Because it, it is going to be a little while. But it's it's a, it's a cool... Um, can we switch back to the... Yeah. Should we take a second to redo the um, US... Let me see how that works. Okay. If we might have to um, stop for one second to make sure that we're not on a skippy USB wire. Okay, I'm going to pull back the way. Okay. A little, little too much light on Sarah. Oh my God. Uh, well, let me check my look. We walk a fine line here. <laughs> um, it's going to pull together a lot of things that we've been talking about in terms of 2D. We're hoping to have the Imprimatura pre-felt uh, ready by the end of November. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I can along with that, but it might not be until the winter. Um, I want to show some 2D uh, dog portrait felting and how I would approach it. And I would like to show a side by side with oil painting um because that's my background and that's where i you know there's so much to learn about color mixing and i don't even claim to be um a, so super knowledgeable about that but um i would like to show how i build a painting and then i find myself when i do 2d either wet or needle felting taking the same approach so I feel like seeing the painting process in um, in oils, in the 2D process in oils next to wool, doing the same portrait is going to be really um, a really cool exercise. Mm -hmm. So that it is so fun watching you paint. That's that's my plan, and um, the Imprimatura line is so beautiful, and. I want to launch it um, and then it would be nice if I could like develop all these things we're going to do with it, but I do want to get it out there and then we're going to keep exploring it. You know, it's, it can be used for pelts, it can be used for 2D, it can be used as a beginning um, to start to um, 2D wet felting, 2D needle felting. It could be used in combination with needle felting if it works as a skin um, or 
you know, a wing or it's a little mm -hmm. thick um, for for wings, but we have the merino pre felt for that as well. So, um, but yes, here is my. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that I made in preparation um, for the fiber fairy but so he's all waxed and I will be sure to show on you know next week once this is dry maybe I can do a quick maybe when I iron I can do a little live or something um, probably just on our Facebook page but um and show ironing that the wax does is part of what makes the wings a little heavy and um, harder to shape, but it does stay very, very pliable. Um, this is the guy that has the waxed wings. This is the f uh, first one I made. This is our demo. <laughs> Who knows what great. is going to happen here or if I'll even finish it. Um, but I will uh, put the fur on his belly and finish this guy out as well and show you, um, show you him. So I'll have three at least. And I might just leave his wings unwaxed so that you can see, can see the difference. Um, his ended up, I'm not sure if you guys can see with the light coming through, but his ended up, these ones ended up a little on the thin side, but they're, they're still okay. It's cool, they look membrane-y. I'd be curious to see if anybody does the um, silk fabric. It has less stretch so it has that nice consistency, but it has less. The nice thing about these is you can, you can make it. You can. It has stretch, almost mm -hmm. like a real, um, a real membrane. So would waxed, wet felted fabric make a good purse or book cover? A uh, book cover could be really cool. Waxed, wet felted. Yeah. Yeah, like um, like the waxed jackets and stuff maybe mm -hmm. like that we did it. it wasn't three hours I had a what's that I had, a schedule. I had a schedule it was just a little different for us so I wanted to <laughs> what lies oh <laughs> I thought you were <laughs> signaling me I was over there like... <laughs> Um, I wanted to do, like I said, a felt along that's really a felt along because that's a lot of fun for me to just, um, you know, for us to felt together. And Kyla, oh my gosh. What's the matter? What is that? The, yeah. the white thing. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> and where did it come from? <laughs> um, so we're going to do elves which are like i have not made in a long time and so that'll be really fun that'll be low-key let's just get together and chat and felt and then the bottle toppers i'm thinking is would be the december one and um again i i'm gonna need a refresher and maybe i should even have marcia um she's good she's really good at mm -hmm. the bottle toppers but i will think about what specifically I want to make. And if you guys want to try to make the same thing, I'll be sure to figure it out and um, make a supply list. But I've been feeling the need for the um, for the camaraderie and the get together, so. It takes our village to raise them. <laughs> to raise what? Us, us children is what someone said. Thanks, Sarah, Kyla, and John. It takes your village to raise us children. <laughs> village. Uh, we're the village. It is like a village in here. We should do a behind the scenes one day. We're going to have, um, right now on the calendar is a Sherafina Day, which is the open house day. If anyone was is within a visiting distance, um, it was really fun last time and... Um, nice turnout. I'll try to have some something special out in the shop for sale, um, either like uh, special locks or extra fiber or maybe something specially carded or something. I don't know. Ooh. Just um, and what else? Yeah, the two sales um, are coming up. We're gonna do oh Sheriffina Day 
is Small Business Saturday, which is the Saturday after Thanksgiving, is what we're thinking. 27th. Yeah. Any questions before we Not say goodbye? So much. Lots of thank yous. <laughs> oh, the time lapse of the shipping. <laughs> day. Yeah, that would be that would be pretty cool. I feel like I did it on my phone for like thirty seconds mm -hmm. once, but um it is cool how quickly the stuff goes out. And like I said, John's changing the way the shipping process looks, so that's kind of cool too. Fancying it up. I was putting all this pressure on me. I know. I, well, I have to. This is what I do. I spill the beans so that it has to happen. <laughs> That's what I do it to myself. I'm going to do it to you too. <laughs> I know. So, okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was a lot of fun. If not a little bit scattered, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, I can't wait to see the bats and. Um, Hopefully I, I gave you everything that you need in terms of information. So, but I know you'll figure it out too. It's not super complicated, a complicated animal. It's just pulls together a lot of different steps. So this will be available so. to rewatch. Yeah, this shortly. will be on our, um, our YouTube channel and you can now, if you are subscribed to the YouTube channel, well, you can search the um, playlist. So there's a felt along playlist that shows all of the all of the felt alongs together. So thank you so much and